Okay, we're gonna start with the chapter five. Chapter five is a uh, uh, foreign exchange to, uh, market. So let's look at the slide. And we are going to use the slide from my iPad and have a lectures. So it starts, it is the market for foreign exchange. So who's the foreign exchange market? FX market is foreign exchange market. So FX market means the foreign exchange market. Who is the market, foreign market exchange uh, participants? So foreign exchange market is two tier market. Two tier market means there is wholesale market, which is called interbank market, interbank markets, wholesale market. It's about 200 bank, like 100 and 200 bank worldwide has a market in foreign exchange. So bank is major, um, major um, player uh, in the foreign exchange market. There's also non-bank dealers which is about 40% of the market. So there's a hundred, 200 banks and a 40% non-bank. And there are also foreign exchange uh, market brokers, basically who match buy and sell the orders and they do not carry the inventory. So there are three players in the market, in the bank market, bank, non-bank dealer, which has the inventory and brokers. And that there's also retail market for the clients. So they are they are the major player in and and then also final major players are the central bank of the country. The central bank of the country is also the major player in foreign exchange market. Okay. So this is the shares of the reported global foreign exchange turnover by country 2013. So in 2013, UK is 37%, United States is 19, Singapore 8%, and Hong Kong 7%. So this, these are major countries that you can um, participate in the foreign exchange turnover by country. This is average electric uh, FS conversation per hour and you see the clearly see that uh, there is a uh, um, tons of the conversation here and believe that the well the american market open european market open that's probably the most frequent uh, conversation happen so the banking relationship large commercial banking basically maintain demand deposit account with another and also it facilitated the efficient functioning of the um, fx market for exchange market so if you look at this the corresponds banking relation example one so bank a is in london and bank b is in new york Okay. Now suppose one pound is dollar twenty-five dollars. So British pound one equals to the US dollar one twenty-five. Now currency trader basically employed the bank A by 160 pounds and the bank B the bank A sells the two hundred dollars using its correspondent relationship. So this is the the balance sheet you can see. So the, this is about bank A. So bank A, you deposit pound at B, then you basically had the 300 pound before, and then it become 460 because 
160 pounds is deposit, right? And because you pay $200 US dollars, so it's decreased by $200 US dollars. That's asset, right? So it means that you basically have the same pounds, like the 1,940 pounds, because uh, you have the same amount of pound dollars. I mean, you pay the same amount of dollar, the dollars that buy 160 pound, pounds. So in London, you record as pounds. Now in New York, uh, liability side, I'm sorry. So B deposit, so bank B deposit, basically, the $200, right? So the liability is increased by 200. And then bank also B pound deposit basically decreased by 160 pounds, right? So, so the total liability and owner's equity basically should be same as asset. So that's the balance, bank X balance sheet before and after. You basically receive 160 pounds and pay $200. And you have liability increase by $200 and pounds decrease by 160 pounds so that you have matching asset and liabilities. Now what about bank B? Bank B exactly opposite way. So for asset, now you receive $200, right? Bank B, and then pay 160 pounds. So for asset, $200 increase and 160 pounds decrease, you still have the same asset. And then for liability and equity, now the pound increased by 160, so the liability increased by that, and then you receive dollars, so dollar liability decreased by 200, so that you have same asset and total liability and equity. So it's quite straightforward. So the practice problem, practice problem, So the practice problem we have is bank X in Milan, so Italian bank, so they use Euro, right? And bank Y is in London, so use pounds. Current exchange rate is one pound equals to 1.1 Euro. Show the cor correct balance in each account if the currency trader employ bank X by 100 million pounds from the current trader bank Y for 110 million euro, right? Because uh, because of this exchange rate. So for bank X, you have 300 million asset, but have deposit 100 million pounds, so increase by 100 million. Now Euro deposit basically you sell, so 110 Euro decrease, liability up budget. So increase 110 Euro, decrease 100 pound. For B, because bank, no, no, I mean bank Y, bank Y basically receive Euro, right? So increase by 100 and pounds decrease, right? And for liability opposite. So increase pounds, decrease euro so that you can have same total asset, total liability as before. So another example here, US importer desiring to purchase merchandise from Dutch export invoice in euro. The cost is 750 euro, okay? So it's a trading situation. US importer, we contact this US bank because they are trading at US bank, inquire about euro dollar exchange rate. Say that US bank offered the prices like one euro equals to 1.3092. 
Now, if the U.S. import accept this offer, basically the, what they should do is they have to pay the dollar amount, same dollar amount. So 750 the euro times the exchange rate 1.3092, which is $981,900 to buy 750,000 euro. Now, U.S. Bank has the correspondent bank in Eurozone, uh, which is here, Easy Banks, for example. So they basically debit this correspondent bank account 750 euro, right? And the credit that amount to the Dutch exporters bank accounts. So bank, Dutch exporter has the Easy Bank account and they send it. US Bank then credit is book basically 981,900 as an offset to the 900. 81,900 debit to US. In Porter's account, basically decrease its correspond bank account with Easy Bank. So, what basically they should do is they basically have the, the local bank, the local means same country, same country's bank. And then what they can do is they also have the correspondent bank, uh, which is the bank uh, of the foreign country. So here, US bank versus easy bank, right? And the importer pay the dollar amount, same dollar amount as euro based on the exchange rate, and then send this euro to easy bank, and easy bank will credit Dutch exported bank. I mean, come. So it's how you trade using dollars and euro, like the foreign exchange rate, rate. So foreign country. So how to communicate? Now, this communication means we need to communicate. We need to set a communication system. There are a number of system here. Swift chips echo. So SWIFT is very commonly used to one the Society for the Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. CHIPS is a clearinghouse interbank payment system and ECHO is exchange clearinghouse limited. So this is the clearinghouse you have. So suppose US bank first needed to purchase Euro, right? In order to have the transfer the Dutch Explorer. How to buy it? Basically US bank can use the CHIPS account, I mean CHIPS, for setting the purchase of euro dollar from say Swiss bank, okay? We structure invoice information via SWIFT. So through the SWIFT, you can send the invoice to Swiss bank and let them deposit the euro to the easy bank. So there's actually one bank between US bank and easy bank because uh, Sometimes uh, the bank should be a major player and uh, they use the SWIFT, they use CHIPS to settle purchase and then they basically use the SWIFT to set up the invoice and they transfer to the easy bank. And this transfer between Swiss bank to easy bank is basically using correspondent bank account or international relationship like so, such as chips. So uh, it depends on how you set up the account, set, set up the transactions. So it means that this is international communication they actually set. So the interbank market, they set, a, set that already this type of international communication and they use these and send the money. So if you send the money using the SWIFT code, it means that when you, you use the SWIFT network to send the money. Sometimes small banks does not have SWIFT number. So like the, if, I, if somebody send money from say China to the United States and the US bank is kind of the smaller bank, then they mostly use the bigger banks such as the Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citibank, and and then send again to the local bank, okay? So that's how usually, uh, how to trade, how to uh, use the foreign exchange market 
uh, during trade or sending money, wiring money, things like that. 